My name is Mariana Semenich and I will moderate the next workshop called People and Development. So, social capital is important for development. What is the role of culture, education, social entrepreneurship uh, in building the vision of municipality development? What is the power of mobilizing the municipality, formal and informal connections, uh, ensuring unity? In this workshop, we collected the speakers who will demonstrate, show their stories, show their practices, tell you how they invested in the most valuable and quite often truly underestimated element, people. So, I do. I, I'm really pleased to present our speakers, Ms. Yulia Fediv, CEO of uh, Creative Europe Task Ukraine, Executive Director of Ukrainian Cultural Foundation, Yuri Feluk, CEO of Promprela Renovation, founder of Teplomisto Platform in Ivano Frankivsk, Mr. Andriy Zakaluk, history teacher and director of Lvivsky Lyceum and Lviv City Council, Vladimir Prebilic, our guest from Slovenia, uh, Mayor of Kochevia Municipality, Vice President of the Local Self Government Association Lecturer, he's the professor of the Ljubljana University, and uh, a little bit later, we'll be joined by Ms. Valeria Ioannan, Deputy Minister of Digital Transformation for European Integration. Okay, how shall we work within the next 85 minutes? Each of the speakers prepared a small presentation for you. We'll have uh, up to one uh, hour of time for them to tell their stories. And then 20, 25 minutes for the question and answer session. So I do want you all to ask questions. Uh, in Facebook under the stream page and uh, in YouTube you can actually use uh, Ukrainian and English because we stream the international expert exchange in two languages and please we want you we encourage you to be involved to give us comments and to ask questions okay let's start I guess okay Ms. Yulia Fedev please you'll be the first one so, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and my presentation will be right there on the screen. I do hope uh, it will be there. I'll just uh, start. I'll just start and tell you about the Ukrainian Cultural Foundation, what that is. So, this is the state institution that was established uh, according to the law on uh, Ukrainian Cultural Foundation, law of 2017. Our mission is to support the culture and creative industries in Ukraine, supporting namely uh, the, the creation of Ukrainian cultural content by artists and by people who actually reside within the Ukrainian territory because art is a really a broad concept. It's not about artists as we know them, but uh, it relates to each of us in everyday life actually um, somehow uh, int interact with, uh, with art. So that's why we have Ukrainian Cultural Foundation to present you mechanisms of state support in the area of culture. And what is the peculiarity? Why are we so special? For the first time within the 30 years of Ukrainian independence, we finally have the state institution which is fully transparent. On competitive basis, it provides support to representatives of state and municipal enterprises and to NGOs because who may be our requesters? So uh, the enterprises and the institutions and agencies of cultural area, also SMEs, uh, working in uh, creative industries, NGOs, geos, and also amalgamated communities can be other requesters of our foundation. So it all gives us an opportunity to create this ecosystem of culture and creativity where all the players, all the stakeholders may get certain funds from the state budget to uh, implement their projects. And the global mission is to preserve and preserve the cultural heritage and development of Ukrainian culture in the context of current world trends, to preserve our culture for future generations, not just to popularize what we already have, but we need to create something, create new history of Ukrainian culture. And for that, for us, uh, in uh, the foundation in 2018, we elaborated a strategy short-term strategy 2019-2021 for strategic goals we have. First one is enhancement of institutional and financial capacity uh, for uh, organizations working in the cultural and creative uh, area and also the tourism development and contribution to creation of a cultural product. One of the key goals strengthening the role of culture in development of society because we understand how do we underestimate the role of culture in formulating 
formulation of the state policy, when it comes to formulation of state uh, policy, national policy and local policies. And also, we want to tell the local authorities and central state power bodies to tell that we need to invest in culture because society, economy and basically uh, the state lives due to the culture as well. And, and of course, we want to make Ukrainian culture international popularize the content abroad. So within three years of our existence, Ukrainian Cultural Fund supported 6,386 applications. In 2018, we had 716 of applications. In 2019, we had 2,059. In 2020, uh, 3,611. So every year we can see that every year we had this demand and only growing from the Ukrainian society to get our support. And we understand the trust to the state, uh, trust to our foundation uh, presenting the state as growing. So if we look at the number of applications and the supported applications, so, grants provided by UCF, 2018, 293, total, a total amount of uh, 4.6 million euros. 2019, we provided 432 grants, 16.6 million euros. 2020, as of course, due to COVID-19 pandemic, we had this separate uh, program of institutional support. We provided, uh, we provided more than 1,300 grants, 30.26 million euros in total. So we we can see that state funding in cultural areas is growing, it's increasing, and uh, it's it shows that state attitude to civic society and to culture is improving. When we take the regional allocation among the requesters of the foundation, who are the most active? Five regions we have in Ukraine. So we have Kyiv and Kyiv region. So uh, Lviv, Kharkiv regions, Rivna region, Zaporizhia, and uh, Kyiv and Poltava. So we can see that other regions are not that active. So we really encourage you to apply for UCF grants. And as I told you, type of the legal entity, mostly uh, we have the NGOs as our requesters, and then we have state enterprises and institutions and municipal enterprises as well. Also, we have the majority of applications from the regional centers and uh, not many from villages. So, of course, UCF is promoting new programs, launching new programs to support projects, projects for amalgamated communities in Ukraine, for villages, for rural environments, actually not to present it in such a way that we only support the cities. When we talk about the programs in our capacity, so in general, UCF uh, has approximately 13 programs. The 14th program is the program of institutional support that uh, was launched only in 2020 when uh, the pandemic came to Ukraine. Unfortunately, well, right now we don't know whether we will continue this program next year, but the programs that we have today, and you have this uh, opportunity by January, February to apply. So, analytics of culture to support the research in the area of cultural policy formation at local level, sectoral research and sectoral studies. So we can like study how culture determines and how it affects other areas of life at the level of your community or at the national level. And analytics of culture, why do we have it? To actually gather the knowledge, gather the evidence in order to increase investment in culture, then inclusive art program aimed to support cultural products which are inclusive for uh, people with disabilities and also supporting artists with disabilities. With the support of the British Council, we launched it. Then we have trainings, exchanges, residences, residences openings. Then we speak about mobility, internal, external mobility, residences and openings, uh, projects of the newly created institutions for young artists. So cultural capitals of Ukraine. I want all 
the cities, all the towns, all the villages, please do apply for this program because every year UCF uh, determines three cities with more than 100,000 uh, 100, inhabitants and less uh, than 100,000 uh, inhabitants. So we have different categories, uh, cities broken into different categories, and you'll get this title for a whole year. And I do hope that you'll get the proper funding, regardless of your volume. So next year, Mariupol is the big capital, and Slavutic is the small capital, cultural capital. And right now, you can actually apply for the status of cultural capital 2022 to get this whole year for support. And UCF with Mantas, we do promote it. So the biggest program, Innovative Culture product broken into sectors we have exhibitions here of local museums museums uh, in uh, regional museums and also uh, dance shows theater projects and cultural uh, heritage material no material so urban space projects and basically all the projects related to the urban development and uh, music projects as well fashion and design so you can find anything you want so many interesting projects may be found as UCF may support audiovisual art. We also support local media and television. So we may have TV or radio product also supporting the media platforms. Scholarships, scholarships for uh, independent artists. If all other programs they do support individual entrepreneurs and legal entities, this one is for independent artists who are individuals. Well, remarkable events. What is this about? So events held nationwide at regional level. So some important events uh, in Ukraine or abroad, and we will next uh, next year we have uh, we'll have projects dedicated to 30th anniversary of Ukrainian independence, and also uh, different projects dedicated to uh, prominent Ukrainians and also Culture Plus. So we have Culture Plus street culture and also supporting the youth projects, also Culture Plus veterans. Uh, together with the Ministry of Veterans, we uh, launch it and Culture Plus Education, uh, together with the NGO Osvitoria, and also Culture for Changes program. If you have some uh, partner cities in Germany or Britain, you may actually apply for Ukrainian, British, Ukrainian, German projects. We implement it together with German and British governments, Children of Culture. What is that? We want to support children as target audience and also culture tourism regions for small communities. It's really, really, really great because we support these tourist tours, local museums, local festivals. And you can all see the deadlines on your screen. So mostly uh, for many of them, we have January 14th as the deadline, February 1 for tourism regions and 1st March for the cultural capitals. Scholarships, uh, this is the biannual program. Program. So, apart from these uh, grant programs uh, that I presented, we have so many other institutional programs which are free of charge, fully open for participation, many educational opportunities provided by UCF. Uh, we also have on our website and on YouTube channel, we have this video tutorial on grant management where you can actually uh, get some interesting information, there are lectures, you can prepare for applying. Uh, to UCF grant and also video tutorial for cultural management where our requesters who already received grants and money uh, one of these grants they tell you how to operate the project how to use the state budget this is the analytical resource UA culture org so you can actually subscribe a lot of analytics for the cultural sector you may find partners in Ukraine and abroad a huge database of partners in different sectors as there and also there is a schedule of events supported by UCF you can know more of our projects we support it and also on the website of UCF we have the archive of projects everything is there so you can familiarize easily with the projects we had in your regions uh, and get inspired and also the creative accelerator program uh, this is the program for alumni of the UCF who received grants and we never forget about these organizations we try to support our alumni we try to monetize the projects by supporting by cooperating with business nationally and locally so please involve to creative accelerator program and just to finish two cases for you to understand what types of projects does UCF support 
I already mentioned uh, that more than 1,000 uh, of cases are there in the archive. So this project, Inclusive Museum in Ostroch Castle, aims to demonstrate the diversity of Ukrainian art and helps to understand development of culture for people with disabilities in Ostroch Castle. And also cultural route called Spachiv's Path, uh, actually to uh, create this new cultural route on the old trade route. Please get inspired, uh, apply. Uh, you can see the contact data on the last slide. Please uh, send us your letter, subscribe. We also have different webinars, trainings free of charge and everything is saved there, stored at YouTube channel. So please, we are looking forward to get your projects. We are looking forward to get your applications. You see we have faith in you. We are always open to cooperate. Thank you. Thank you, Yulia. Uh, I really liked your statement. Let me quote. You told that uh, the demand is increasing and the trust the state is increasing because UCF gets this trust. We as representatives of the trust gets this, uh, the trust. So it somehow resonates with that discussion that we had 40 minutes ago when we talked about trust to institutions. And just to conclude, uh, just uh, to conclude uh, with the previous discussion, so the trust is unevenly distributed in Ukrainian society. Somewhere too much, somewhere not enough. And it's really nice to know that uh, the trust to state institutions is growing, especially to newly created ones. And uh, some important information for the communities you told us that UCF will continue opening new opportunities, giving new opportunities for small communities, small towns, small villages. It's very important. It's very important, especially in the context. Uh, it's important in the context that 1,469 communities, they already have their own resources. They have their own environment and conditions. I think UCF will become one of these resources they actually can use. Thank you, Yulia, so much. Yuri. Now we are coming to you. Uh, so, please, we'd like you to involve in this presentation and tell us about a little bit different thing, how you invest in people, a little bit different perspective uh, as the businessman, creating synergy between different institutions and circles, please. Uh, okay, Yuri, we'd like to get your mic on because it's a little bit hard. Thank you. Oh, I'm so sorry. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I do hope that you actually you will bring my presentation to the screen, but I'd like to start with what exactly? With a small introduction in 2013. Uh, some of the entrepreneurs, I was one of them, we had this huge demand for certain changes in ivano frankivsk city. We lived uh, in the city, all of us, and at some moment we realized that for us to develop, uh, to develop our businesses, we just need to change the overall situation in our city market. So we started studying different theories of evolution, urban development and design. and. We concluded that sustainable development goes from bottom level, it goes up, it goes upward. So we again did not want, we didn't want to uh, fight for this political leadership, but we wanted to activate and develop the community in transversal context. So uh, then we understood that the, the, um, the best dynamics we have when we build this healthy dialogue and interaction in this triangle, business, civic society, and uh, I provocatively left it state authorities, but let's say administration, local administration, was, uh, well, power in its broad sense. Okay, and the third basic principle is the principle of consolidation. If we take a closer look at any developed society, we will see this uh, high level of trust and respectively, this trust allows to join efforts around certain common tasks. This actually was our conclusion that we need to nurture trust and increase consolidation. The basis on these three principles, we've uh, formulated this civic platform called the Warm City. What it is, this is the platform for different initiatives and synergy between these initiatives and uh, the most important task uh, uh, that we had, in simple words, just to help people to uh, 
Actually, come step aside from this paternalistic position, just uh, for them not to expect that someone would help, and actually to consolidate and start thinking, uh, start thinking about involvement and uh, effort joining, and actually unite by uniting the efforts, reaching the results. So you can see these values; they are here. And the next slide, uh, basically, this this is the team of the Warm City platform, and half of the people are people who are not from Ivano-Frankivsk, people who returned uh, or came from other cities to take these positions, and uh, our second team is the supervisory board, these, the, this is the supervisory board, we established it uh, after one year of our existence, so Ukrainians need to learn how to uh, have this fair play while doing business. I'm a founder and uh, actually a CEO of the organization and uh, basically I'm subordinated to the supervisory board. And what is very important, we have more than 50 businesses. These are our partners. We managed to join these efforts. So local companies uh, which institutionally support us and financially support us on a monthly basis and uh, this is again about joining around values, joining business around values. It creates certain dynamics in the city, and thanks to it, thanks to these teams, we started um, implementing different projects, absolutely diverse, in education, culture, economy, urban development, sport, environment, energy efficiency, mobility, sustainability, media, social entrepreneurship, and so on. And uh, Within six and a half years, we've implemented more than 400 of these projects successfully. And there was direct impact on infrastructure and culture, on society. And for us, what was the most important? We had the side effect that we uh, noticed during the implementation. So we taught people, we taught people to uh, how to interact in sectors, intersectoral uh, connections, that was, that's what we were generating. Then we went to more ambitious projects, intersectoral projects, and two examples, two cases, I'd like to actually uh, tell about it, Urban Space 100, what is that? The idea was to create this public restaurant 100 people invested uh, uh, some amounts of money, that was a single time, single investment, so not regular one, and 80% uh, of the profit now goes to the city development uh, initiatives. Very different people, from students to, I don't know, entrepreneurs and activists, and even, uh, and even uh, we have MPs among these people. They all have equal right to vote, and this is about democracy. So they all decide where to invest and what expenses will be there. So three tasks we had within this project. Basically, that that's what this that that's that how the space looks like. Okay, on the next slide you can see uh, the key monetizing points. So, self-sustainable enterprise, which basically solves some social issues and problems. Okay, let's go further. These are the results of the project. So, supporting the civic society, we can see that more than one thousand events are funded. So, uh, we had half a million people, even more than half a million people, half, half a million guests in this space and 118 of supported projects. So, very progressive agenda we do have right now So in the city. So, this project uh, was really characterized with very high demand from 15 countries from different Ukrainian cities, we received requests and the first official franchise went to Kiev. And in Kiev, we have this urban space 500 opened, by the way. And the second project uh, to share for us one of the most ambitious initiatives that we had, the project which is based, which is being actively implemented from Prilad the Renovation in the center of Ivano-Frankivsk on the basis of this old abandoned factory Right now, we are creating an innovative ecosystem to develop three trigger areas, new economy, entrepreneurship, informal education, modern art and urban development. We do believe that these areas, these sectors are the most important for any city to develop and flourish. So, the next one, please. 
This is uh, the factory itself. Uh, no, this is what we're building, not the factory. So, 36.2 thousand of square meters in the center of Ivano Frankivsk, 1.8 hectares. Yeah. Uh, diverse infrastructure we have there, and uh, different incubators, accelerators are being uh, constructed, business school, school of new professions, food market as well, gallery, art gallery, so exhibition platform. Uh, offices for innovative companies, scientific hubs. This is an ecosystem that will support the city. It will definitely accelerate the shift from the Soviet uh, dynamics, and actually it will help the city to become, to get a new face, let's say. And uh, right now we would like actually somehow to we're struggling with this problem of uh, brain drain, but uh, I think that definitely will manage to slow it down. So this is the future. This is the future of our project, and actually part of it is functioning already. We have representatives of different sectors here, a lot of business representatives, NGOs, and uh, you can see that we have the office of the Department of Investment Policy of the State Con of the City Council, and this is the first case in Ukraine when we have absolutely different representatives from different sectors working in the same space. So these are the transitional results, but these are also very important. You can see that project. Uh, uh, is funded by different co-investors, more than 600 of them, 6 million of commercial investment and almost $800,000 of grant investment. 17% of project is already implemented. And we are just moving forward to complete the implementation. And what is also important, that during the implementation, we built the community. We're building the community composed of investors uh, and other stakeholders. So this is already a powerful impetus for the region and for the state that helps to reload the city agenda and somehow to uh, present a new agenda progressive. We have many institutional partners. They all are here. They are present in this officially developed strategy for Invanofratkiv's development. State authorities, we do have them, and of course, international partners and local partners in particular. And what we want to say that from the very beginning, we were motivated to use this model with high potential for replication, not only in Ukraine, but we try to build an inclusive economy with inclusive and responsible society to be created where each uh, can use one's capacity at its full. So I really hope that this may be useful for other cities. We are open to share our successful experience. So, so far, that's it. Uh, I will really, I will really be, be glad to give answers to your questions, Yuri. Thank you. And uh, again, another statement that I liked the most. So you're told that sustainable development always goes from the bottom level and moves upwards. So this is something that the decentralization reform proved, and for a couple of years already, we again we see it that of course all the changes, all the changes. Uh, happening because of ordinary people, average people who simply decided to change something. We can see that we have these changes elsewhere. And the story that you told us just underlines that the changes that we have, uh, every time it must be human-centric, human-oriented. And it must rotate around these values you mentioned, this warmth. Uh, as one of the values. So please, what initiate, uh, what motivated you as an entrepreneur to invest in people? Because you mentioned different projects, educational, and the empathy and emotion. So, okay, uh, not many entrepreneurs uh, decide actually to launch projects in such an abstract area, emotional area. What was the impetus? Okay, so if we talk about my personal motivation, after 2008, I uh, came to ivano Frankivsk. I did not actually think that I would go to my native city, but I uh, uh, started uh, meeting people, started talking to businessmen, 
After I lived uh, for uh, after I've lived for a couple of years in a big city, I returned there to a smaller city, and I felt that I did not have enough uh, people to talk to. I felt myself like a sm big fish in a small pond. I simply wanted to actually give more to this market. I wanted to develop the market. So I thought I have the alternative, like to leave the country and go to a bigger city or take the responsibility and just to look for some alternative options on how to change the situation here at the local level. And I think at some moment I had this paradigm shift, you know, in my head when in post-Soviet yeah. What is the post-Soviet understanding? Your zone of responsibility, your scope of responsibility uh, actually is limited by your house or apartment. But this is utopia. Everything that is around me is also my responsibility. It's also there under my responsibility. That's when I started looking at everything with different eyes. Right now, it's not just interesting to go into business because of money. I want to help other people to use their capacity and their potential. and. I will definitely feel better when other people do feel better and I really want to live in a better city in a better society. So a pragmatic romantic motivation there was but it makes me happy that's enough actually to continue. Oh, making people happy, good. Making yourself happy. Uh, I think oh, I started I started smiling when you know I uh, hear you telling about it and I really feel how much energy you put into that, a lot of love. I think this is one of the strongest stimuli when you speak about social cohesion and social, cap social capital. You mentioned so much time about community. You mentioned the word community. So let me remind that within the last years, we've been building communities in a couple of... So in English, community means like a group of people and basically uh, and the municipality, for example, that we use uh, to, 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 uh, to, tell, uh, to talk about the structure, the governing structure at the local level. Yes, we are building, we are constructing our communities, our municipalities, we are structuring ourselves, restructuring ourselves. We are expanding the boundaries and horizons, actually, to make our lives more comfortable. Thank you, Yuri. Thank you. And uh, we continue our trip. So Yuri is uh, in Ivano-Frankivsk, and right now Andriy Zakaluk, I think, who is in Lviv. This this is the positive thing about video about online conferences. You can actually uh, stay elsewhere and uh, move westward, <laughs> further and further. Please tell your story. Hi everyone, thanks for the invitation, thanks for having me here, it's very nice to be able to share my experience about working with people. Here's my short story I'd like to tell you, it started on 16th of January 2014. Uh, that time, uh, nominated director of the boarding school in Lviv, just half a kilometer from the city hall. Uh, meters of floor space. It was 27 then. Uh, we had 126 kids there. Mostly destitute of home care. Orphans. Actually, it provided general secondary education. Uh, the school was really dilapidated in every respect. Uh, they had about a hundred personnel, like teacher, nursery stuff, lots of technical assistance. The image was real bad, and lots of abuse, uh, office abuse cases were reported, uh, kids were also deemed dangerous, which was not a surprise, it's a common story with lots of boarding schools, uh, they were considered bad apples. You know, your favorite stereotype perception. We had no sponsors inside, but for some smaller interventions, 
uh, it was quite a challenge to work with the kids because they were really disenchanted with the stay there. So actually the school was deemed probably one of the worst performing ones in the region. And we had that stereotype, the boarding school kids, everything bad that you can imagine. And kids were aware of that, so before my coming to office they had uh, three directors change offices in five years. So what did we start uh, with? Some key first steps we did, particularly with the kids. First of all, it was about all the time spent with kids. That was one of our priorities. We tried to make them to keep in touch with them. Each one of them had some really challenging life history behind. And in many instances we saw that Still, we had to work with them as uh, real people able to join the society as adults in a matter of years. So the activities we had like uh, outdoor camps, we would spend Christmas time and Easter times with them. We also wanted to give them freedom to teachers, because before that, teachers were keeping quiet, uh, really constraining their abilities to teach somebody something. We really gave them free reign. We wanted our teachers to feel free in their ability, to unleash actually their ability to teach kids, uh, to share their experience. We also provided trainings. We looked for every opportunity we could tap in via trainings, uh, seminars, qualifications of great programs, everything which could be taken to improve the quality of the process. Of the process. Наступне це відкритість. Це було одне з ключових. Third priority was openness. In a way, we just made uh, the open door policy for everyone willing to visit the school. We created uh, pages on in social networks. We a website about trying to dispel the bad image that such boarding schools have been enjoying. And in, in a matter of five years, we were able to really replace quite a lot of our personal about 70% of them. It was not just like giving them a boot, but really we tried to see whether people were capable of doing something. There were people who really were not up to the task to teach orphans, for example. There were people approaching or already past the retirement age. We also replaced nearly 100% of the administrative stuff, and it was really necessary. Then we started looking for sponsors, and we found dozens of them. To be more specific, about two uh, dozens of organizations, and that increased our uh, sponsored money contributions several times for, again, to be exact, about 30 times more. By 2018, we we're able to collect about one million grivnias a year from our sponsors. We opened up to international We had our kids go to camps to Italy, to Poland, Germany, Switzerland. They would go to summer camps, to schools in ex on exchange, etc. We also set up a set of training clubs for the 
привели у школу величезну кількість освітніх, спортивних, творчих активів і допомагали. Також дуже важливим, звичайно, було, нам потрібно було зламати якимось чином оце коло, де всі випускники інтернату йдуть в училище. І ми почали готувати дітей до ЗНО, ми почали шукати спеціалістів. At uh, some point, we had 70% of our graduates and the university, the medical university, the Ivan Franco University. Uh, we had a couple of guys going on uh, go slide, on, uh, uh, training education to Poland as well. Uh, here are some glimpses how it looked and how it looks now. This is the laundry room. It was uh, retrofitted with money from the German embassy. We uh, built completely our canteen uh, through a joint також ви бачите, що ми створили в школі сучасну майстерню, живопису і конопису, повністю з нуля. Мальтійська служба допомогла нам створити конференц-зал, бібліотеку сучасну, яку ми назвали «Центр Букс». І також в нашій школі є дуже класна майстерня «Сверл». Це сучасна майстерня по обробітку по обробітку дерева, і ще дуже, звичайно, багато, багато-багато того такого, чого, в принципі, взагалі не було в школі. Ми не зупинилися на цьому, бо ми чудово розуміли, We did understand that the boarding school, however good it is, or looks like, with all the inputs, it's still about kids, and kids sometimes do still have live parents. If so, maybe it's not for those kids to spend all of their time at school. We uh, saw the start of the institutionalization reform. Uh, in their boarding schools and, and we opted uh, for the reform of our boarding school. In 2018 we were able to launch it already by 2017, by the end of the year we were one of the best uh, boarding schools in Ukraine. We had bunches of media people come out to us to show the success theory of our school. Yet still, despite those previous achievements, we wanted to reform it deeper. And we tried to involve everyone engaged in this activity or related to it, from local government, self-government, to CSOs. Uh, the Lviv Education Foundation was extremely helpful. Uh, sometimes to have our kids return to the family, we even uh, tried to buy them clothes and everything necessary for that. So, at some point, uh, this boarding school number two in Lviv ceased to exist, being replaced officially by a what we call Lyceum. Lyceum, uh, which is a complete secondary school, open also for kids from town, not just limited to the orphans we had. Uh, we just had a separate premise uh, dedicated to care and support of kids with uh, from problem families that have had some circumstances at home. Uh, this included also kids that were not able to return to their original families. Uh, the key principle in the, of the reform was everyone is important. It was even more important uh, with the view that there are still people who are scared of any reform or any effort to do something differently. We again tried to dispel this myth. We did not sack anyone. We found people new career opportunities on different positions. 
before we had one teacher for 30 kids. With the reform, we had up to two kids per one carer. It was done with assistance from the local and oblast level government. So we just split the whole system into two parts of the school, accessible to everyone, and a children's care center. Now on importance, what was important? First of all, the approach uh, of small steps in order to really change lives of some very real kids with their lives, with their experience, individual experience. We had to look into that to avoid any trauma, not to affect them more than they have already been. Another point of importance is the importance of investments in education, because it is about actually investing in families. With proper investments in families, in kids' opportunities to gain education, we improve the situation. And, uh, at some point, these kids will be able to return the favor to the society, to the family, they might contribute to changing situations inside the families. It is also important to break down stereotypes. Again, people still live by these beliefs, but boarding school kid is something bad to be avoided, and we wanted to fight it, we were able to instrumentally get rid of this stereotype, and we have our kids at uh, universities, they are no longer ashamed of saying that they've been raised up in a boarding school of ours. And again, for my, with my 10 years experience, I can tell you that education is about people. When you change education, a great education, you bring changes in people and for people. And even small steps may bring great results. Things may not be noticeable at the beginning, but they will be much more palpable at some point in time, affecting destinies, affecting lives, changing the life of the many for the better in this country. Thank you. Real changes to be implemented by real people. What best can be said about your presentation? Uh, I have quite a personal question to you, similar to the one I asked the jury. What was your motive? The members say 27 years, and then going for a boarding school. To teach the to her it not quite a popular solution. What made you wish changes? At that specific school. You know, first of all, back in 2010, I would say even 2009, I started being a teacher in just an ordinary secondary school. Yeah, I had some initial love uh, and liking for kids. I did like it working with kids and for them. And I can tell you that even in the boarding school. Uh, actually, interestingly, we were able to further child, to adopt a child from the boarding school with my wife. She is 20, she is that someone can change something. Thank you. And we go on westward with our story. I'd like to give the floor now to Vladimir Prebilic. Join us, please. Hi. Uh, do you hear me well? Very well. Thank you. So, I'm really not uh, so close that somebody will say approximately 3,000 kilometers lies between Kochevia and of course Kiev, uh, but that doesn't mean that we are not connected in any way. I was asked to say a few words about municipality that I lead for 10 years, so this is my third term on the post of the mayor in our municipality, and I'm proud to be a member of this uh, panel because we heard so many successful stories, and I hope that this small uh, event that happened also in Kuchevia would contribute largely to that fact. 
So to start with the fact our municipality, on, uh, it's really on the south part of Slovenia, as you can see. Uh, so it's really borderline municipality. I would say it's periphery of Slovenia in all its means. So people here are most probably, or they wanted to move themselves to Ljubljana or other cities. So we lost, in, in particular, in last lastly 20 years, we lost approximately 4,000 people that moved away. So it's depopulizing uh, area, and of course, it's underdeveloped area as well. So when I presented or when I prepared this presentation, I started with that size doesn't matter. It's not only the size; it's not. It talks about the location and all the shortcomings that normally are uh, always part of the periphery. Uh, the added value per employee is lower than the average in Slovenia. We don't have any university. The closest university lies 70 kilometers away. This is University of Ljubljana, but where all, I also teach. Uh, but as I said before, it's quite largely municipality, 555 square kilometers and only 16,000 of inhabitants. Of course, you have to know that when we talk about Slovenia and Ukraine, there is a huge difference in the numbers. So the population of Slovenia is only 2 million. What is, if I am correctly informed, one third of the population of Kiev uh, so 16,000 inhabitants is not really a small number. I would say it's the one of the average size municipality uh, in our country. But nevertheless, we were and we still are underdeveloped on one point. And the second uh, important issue is before I came into the office, the unemployment rate in our municipality was 27%. So we were number one when we talk about unemployment rate in the whole country. And today we are at the level of 11%. So we really downsized. How and why was this possible is a very long story. Maybe I don't have time to do that. Uh, if there is uh, someone who will just switch to the first slide, I would like to mention one additional um, fact. And this is when we began to move or to, let's say, promote development in our municipality, uh, we also prepared uh, different kinds of programs. One of them was so successful that we were able to attract a uh, world largest company producing industrial robots uh, for other companies as well. So uh, this was the starting point um, that we switched our development for, let's say, average society into so-called four. Uh, four 0 society. So when we got this investment of uh, um, approximately 30, 30 million euros in our town, the next question was, how can we supply this kind of a company with educated work, uh, workforce or the labor force? So my business incubator came up with the idea that we should introduce a so-called basics of robotics in the primary school education. Uh, when I first addressed Minister of Education, he started laughing at me, saying, you know, robots are a really important issue. How can you imagine yourself bringing this kind of curriculum uh, to the six, year, uh, six uh, years of age uh, children, you know? Uh, but we uh, said, well, this is up to us. We will do everything by ourselves because there was no kind of support by federal government in Ljubljana. Uh, so we developed a special curricula that starts with the basic training already in the primary class in our uh, primary school. This is uh, children starting with six years of age, and then we move until the ninth year of, year of age. So there are three uh, levels, first, sec first, second, and third class. Uh, we already have these robots being uh, taught in our primary schools. Of course, as you can see on the picture, these are really, I would say, primitive ways of programming. But uh, this is also the case when the children or pupils are firstly acquainted with the algorithms, firstly are acquainted with basics of mathematics and technology. Uh, for the second level, this goes on the next slide, this goes from um, the class of four to, until seven, uh, we installed the um, program uh, known as Lego. We do Lego, you know, uh, Lego blocks, you know, from from uh, Denmark, uh, they also provided us with all the equipment, but what we did is we created a special curriculum also for this level of education. 
Of course, as you can see on these pictures, that there there are already, uh, I would say, basics of of uh, computing, basics of programming, uh, also basics of robotics. Uh, and I have to say that children are really, really happy when they have this kind of opportunity. Again, designed um, and developed by us. Uh, it's not part of the curriculum, official curriculum in our country. So when we started this six years ago, uh, many people were really, well, reluctant. And, and I, I would say that even the um, directors of our schools were not really happy when I confronted them with the plea that this kind of curriculum should be uh, put in the school. Of course, the first step to do that kind of uh, development of curriculum was to teach the teachers. Uh, and we did that uh, with the first group six years ago. Then when they were acquainted with how they should teach in their classrooms and we supported them by our staff from the business incubator, uh, this became really a success story, as you can see on the next slide. Um, so you will see that uh, over, over 260 teachers were by now um, taught in our uh, curriculum for teachers. Uh, after the first year in our municipality, also other municipalities heard what we, what we are doing here in Kocheuja, and they would like to be part of that. So we invited them to, to our town and to get basic training on how they could also teach this kind of curriculum in their schools. And as you can see by today, over 120 primary school schools across Slovenia uh, is using our curriculum for basics of robotics in the primary schools. Um, I also am quite, let's say, satisfied that over 800 participants, it's, it's in our days, uh, included into 15 webinars uh, to be educated for the next uh, school year. So this is the school year 21-22 that will start next, next year. So the next slide is uh, explaining us that if you wanted to do that, uh, this will be also a, what's a basic, um, basic cooperation between different levels. Uh, when we talk about LIGO, uh, this is, uh, more, let's say, not so popular as the first level is, but nevertheless, I'm really certain that uh, in the years in front of us, this will also be a success story. As you can see on the bullet point at the bottom, uh, our the most prominent institute of jo Jozef Stefan, this is like comparing to Institute of Lomonoso in, in Russia or, so, or something like that, so it's really prominent. They are beginning working with us to develop new curriculum as well because it became a basic knowledge in the meantime if you wanted to move the whole society from, let's say, society 2.0 that we are most mostly into society 4.0 that we want to be in the future. Uh, the next slide will explain that we were not only recognized in our, uh, in our neighborhood, so not even not only in Slovenia, um, some schools began to contact us, but also the, uh, we got the invitation by international community. Um, with the help of Yaskava company, who did support the program, because I would say they see this program as the basics of headhunting for their company, um, they, they introduced what we do here in Germany and uh, our, let's say, uh, information got ours also the European Commission and we were invited uh, to present also the program on the level of European Commission. Not only that, we had to go to Finland, where is a very famous, uh, I would say, Academy of Robotics in the uh, city of Pori. Uh, we were recognized uh, out of many programs to be one of the suc most successful ones uh, in European Union. So uh, we, we got a uh, great number six out of several hundred. So I can say that uh, what it was developed and designed really does um, present an added value, not only in, in uh, Slovenia, as I said, but also abroad. Uh, the next level uh, and the next slide you will see, we also, in, oh, no worries, no, but I will explain. The next level was to, to create also the camps uh, what we are now designing, and uh, we have this year not, of course, due to health problems and the health situation in Slovenia, but we also came up with the design of uh, robotic camps. So we are hosting youth coming from other cities in our country to, uh, to our municipality. They stay here for a week. They are part of the programming. They are part of designing and creating uh, basic uh, operations by robots. 
And I have to say that it's not only added value for designing a successful curriculum that already was mentioned before, but also uh, got us recognized as a municipality that is worth seeing, it's worth uh, paying attention to. Uh, we also added uh, additional value to our tourism development. So investing into education is not only investing into younger people, but it's also investing into a better future, I would say, uh, what was the case also in our municipality. Uh, thank you for your attention. Of course, I'm here to answer any questions you may have. Thank you, Vladimir. Thank you so much. Hvala. Hvala to you. So, uh, I do think that with your story, you somehow emphasized uh, the statements from our previous speakers. Yuri mentioned that all changes in sustainable development comes from the bottom level and goes up. And you actually proved that uh, when you uh, presented these uh, courses, you know, for six-year-olds. And this approach Maybe only successful. It can be only successful. So, we also have Ms. Valeria Ionan, Deputy Minister of Digital Transformation. She's responsible for European integration. So, Ms. Valeria, nice to see you here with us at this workshop. And uh, right after you've joined us, I have just a couple of questions to you. Uh, good afternoon, Mariana. Thank you so much for our uh, invitation. Hello, colleagues. Uh, and, uh, okay, Mariana. Uh, sorry, Valeria. Yes, Valeria. Tell me, uh, please, uh, to start with, why state is investing in people in development and human development? In society development, you present the Ministry, Ministry of Digital Transformation, okay? It's not quite clear why do you need to invent... Uh, why do you need to invest in people? Because mostly your activities are related to education and capacity building, capacity development. So tell us more. Okay. So really an interesting question. Thank you. Uh, to be honest, Ministry of Digital Transformation has this philosophy to transform the lives of people and institutions and business to, to improve the lives of business people and institutions with digital technologies. And we've did a lot. We've done a lot within this year, despite that we are very young as a ministry. But uh, the most popular project called DIA. Uh, Basically, uh, this acronym can be actually uh, interpreted as uh, state and I. So we have the portal of state services within it, a East City, the first, uh, the first one that acts nationwide, and DIA Business and DIA Digital Education is also many components, big national project on digital literacy for people. So in the ministry, we have four key strategic goals for the next three years. So first of all, 100% of all public services to be available online, then providing access to all the citizens to internet, 6 million people to teach them how to become digitally literate. And uh, also improving the IT capacity of the state. Answering your question, Mariana, I want to say that why we actually invest in human capital? Well, first of all, competitiveness, because when Ukrainians will have high quality education, when they are, when digital literacy level will not be just basic, but advanced, everything will help our people to become more competitive at the labor market. And respectively, our economy will strive, I guess. So, Along with that, I'd like to mention that in the cons uh, within the context of digital literacy, it also gives an opportunity to people to use all these opportunities that we that the state gives, like online services. Also, it simplifies it simplifies uh, this routine bureaucratic routine in the life of each citizen. We speak about phone calls and online shopping. We'll do that, and of course, of course, the opportunity to uh, uh, master different digital professions, run your business online, and 
free business not only on the territory of Ukraine, not just within the territory of your country to become a professional businessman, but but actually invade into foreign markets. So, okay. Uh, in fact, just a motto of your activity: if you want to develop, you need to transform. In your case, digitally transformed. You must be digitally transformed. Very well. Okay. Tell me, please, what areas, uh, maybe, what future plans you have? New projects, or I don't know, new something you really want to implement in future. You, as Minister of Digital uh, Transformation, what would you like to do in the education area, skills, abilities, entrepreneurship sector, or the digital skills? when it comes to this so you know right now i am involved to your event not from my ministry not from my office basically but from the ministry of uh, education and science right now i'm staying there but just 20 minutes ago we had a presentation uh, of new ukrainian school the online platform for students and for teachers we have two more than 200 different uh lessons presented there and training sessions available to everyone so this is like a little bit off top a little bit more a little bit of advertising i just want to advertise this platform but what i want to say is that right now we actively cooperate with the ministry of education regarding the digitalization of uh training processes than digital literacy where we actually teach people how to use the technologies it has two components digital educational platform Osvita Diego VUA where we have 40 short tutorials and videos uh, with different celebrities and opinion leaders and experts and these are like micro trainings they uh, teach people how to use technologies and today we have 40 videos and we want to extend the amount of uh, this content in Ukrainian language on digital literacy and we also actively promote the approval of the concept of digital literacy of Ukraine and within the next three years we want to actually encourage uh, our state authorities to adopt different European and global practices so we really want the technologies to be available to everyone to all citizens of the country for our people to be to have high level of digital literacy the next component dia digital education uh, is actually uh, opening of hubs specialized hubs these hubs function uh with the following aim so if if some people don't have access to internet for example their homes they may freely go there, they may be trained there. 2,000 of these hubs we have and 4,000 are still under registration. Maybe if someone doesn't know, last year for the first time we actually ran this study on digital literacy. 53% of Ukrainians have digital literacy level lower than basic. Okay, so we have a lot of work to do. And when it comes to entrepreneurship, we have this dear business project. This is the project containing uh, two components. First, free of charge online platform for current and future businessmen, dear business. And today we have, first of all, uh, today we have, first of all, the free of charge uh, online school for businessmen. Ten different programs in different areas, starting and like how to how to open your business, and also the financial literacy and some specialized tutorials like IT area or food industry and so on. And there is an opportunity without any payment to get advice and consultations in 50 on 50 different topics, NBP, validation of business ideas, marketing, fundraising, access to funding, everything. I just want to say that this blog and this portal actually a lot of positive feedback is there for it, not just from Ukrainian businessmen, but international colleagues who do note that not in every country we have this portal, this resource, so we just need to use it and uh, use all the necessary resources, all the available resources. This portal allows you to have these online exhibitions and also a huge catalog of services uh, of different financial programs and uh, legal services, cases, successful cases, business ideas, ideas, news, and also the expert portal will be launched and uh, the portal to attract investment in SMEs. We also translated everything into English and we continue translating it.
just to in January 2021, we will actually launch this function for B2B format for Ukrainian businessmen to find partners and clients abroad. The second part of the project is opening of the hub network offline. In the centers of entrepreneurial support in Kharkiv, we already have in Mykolaiv, and last week we opened a new format on the base of Shevchenko University for students, and we plan to have Cherkasy, Uzhorod, and other cities. And I just want to note that the entrepreneurship topic, uh, we take it very, very uh, seriously, because the majority of people in our team, well, before we were involved in the ministerial activity, we were entrepreneurs, and I was as well. So, before I uh, actually was invited to work here. So, we know all the painful spots that entrepreneurs uh, have, and we want to provide some solutions. We understand that many failures, uh, we have them because people lack knowledge on entrepreneurship, because nobody taught us how to be businessmen and businesswomen, nobody at schools, at university, nobody did that. So this month, we're about to launch this big project for schools, uh, for high, schooler, uh, high school students, 42 lessons, a special curriculum, and uh, right now we have a pilot format launched in universities called uh, the University of Entrepreneurship. 4,000 students already are there in this program, and I do hope that next year this will not be just a pilot project, not just experimental curriculum, but this will be mandatory for everyone. We have a dream to make Ukraine a country of entrepreneurs. Thank you, Valeria. Thank you. Nice contribution. Uh, but somehow it correlates with what Andri said. So investment in education, and Andri told us that investing in education is about investing in real changes, actual changes. It's really nice to know that at the state institution level, you understand the trend and many things that we have today, but we're expecting to get more in future. And right now, colleagues, we're about to have question answer session and we have a question from the chat it goes to mr yuri uh yuri tell me our audience wants to know what is the relationship with local governance bodies with local authorities and how they perceive your urban development initiatives do they support it uh Okay, as I told you in the very beginning, we refused uh, to take part in the political process. We are not a political party, we're not a political organization. Uh, but still, we set this aim to build the dialogue with business and with local authorities. And I just want to say that if within the first years of this, uh, if within the first years we had not much of this cooperation, we had no dialogue mostly, but we were uh extending uh, we were just uh, accumulating our strength and we clearly determined the areas where we uh, somehow managed to handle this cooperation right now 80 percent of the projects that we launch somehow somehow these are implemented with the support of all three parties civic society business and of course the local authorities that's why, that's why, well, what I can say, the dialogue is, we have the dialogue. It has become constructive within time. We sometimes do have, uh, somehow we may have questions to officials from local authorities. Well, we definitely need to have something to stumble upon. <laughs> if something becomes super perfect, it means that something goes wrong. So, of course, this dialogue is really constructive and uh, more and more target connections we have with different departments like Department of Investment Policy. Uh, they even are territorially located here with us, with the architecture, with utility services, directly with the mayor we have uh, very productive interactions. So definitely certain positive dynamics is observed. So the next question goes to Yulia. Yulia, tell me, uh, 2020 uh, was really hard, I'd say ass kicking for us all. So uh, despite that, you showed us, uh, you've demonstrated that still, that still we manage to invest in culture. You did that. So why 
like, why do we need to invest in culture even during the crisis? Why do you advise us uh, to invest in culture? What is the role of culture development at the local level? Thank you for your question. During my uh, presentation, as I mentioned that, so if we take a closer look at OEC study, they form this pyramid, let's say, hierarchy of society's life development. So first, culture is the background. It's the bottom level. Then we have society built upon that. Uh, then we have the economy, and the sub-level is uh, environment, and uh, we have this eco-friendly mentality for people. But culture is the background, because it determines how we actually, what the attitude will be to the healthcare area, social life. Like, do we uh, develop the creative economy or the knowledge-based economy, or we still live in the industrial economy paradigm. So culture shapes everything in the society. So if we don't invest in humanitarian area, in culture, in science, in education, therefore um, the current conditions that we have in the country and within the context of COVID-19 and we have the lockdown restrictions, we will have lockdown in January. So uh, the dynamics of the pandemic, we have uh, decreased investment flow truly decreased investment flow in the cultural area in 2020. We can see all see the figures. We see the statistics. Uh, during all these 30 years, this is the lowest flow. So we cannot ignore culture. So culture, education, and science, we cannot ignore this sector. If we continue ignoring it, we will have a devastated economy. We need to invest in culture. We need to invest in culture properly. Only if we do, then we'll start talking about this shift from industrial uh, economy to creative economy. We as UCF, together with the Ministry of Culture and Information Policy, we try constantly to uh, present information about cultural issues at government meetings, communicating with uh, the state authorities, and we managed, we managed to get some results in spring when uh, actually there were discussions on decreasing uh, the budget flow to the cultural area, because, you know, culture is usually taken as entertainment by people. But culture, what that is, again, culture is the basic component for our mentality to shape, and it creates our attitude to other social processes. So we managed to have 400 million of funding for the cultural area, actually to, ma to maintain it. And of course, the institutional support program, we managed to fight for it successfully. We have signed agreements with almost 900 organizations today, but still the state treasury does not provide funding. Anyway, we observe that, like, theoretically, we have the money, but state is not providing it. In practice, I do hope that by the end of the year, all payments will be covered and uh, we'll invest in the culture, not only on paper, but we do have this hope. If we go to the language of figures, so investment in creative industry, in the budget, well, it's quite a big piece of budget. So when we were struggling for uh, the funding in spring, we took the information from the tax services and revenue services, 2 billion grivnas. This is a huge investment, still. This is a huge piece. And if uh, we take about the jobs, the number of jobs in the creative industry, well, 4 million people are involved in creative industries in Ukraine. So we need to show this interrelation. And the money uh, coming from the budget to the cultural area, then, uh, if we just show the whole picture, but still, 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 we have this culture analytics program when we want just via figures to show how important it is to invest in culture, because culture uh, ensures this return on investment. Please stay with us a little bit more. We have a question to you. So do, does UCF plan to cooperate with business to actually uh, support the cultural area investment? 
development. We are doing that already. Starting from 2018, UCF uh, developed a fundraising strategy, and we have a cultural integrity program and also uh, welfare culture and uh, business angel clubs. We cooperate with SMEs and big corporations, and we implement joint programs to fund uh, the cultural and art projects. So partially from the budget and partially from private foundations and international businesses. So we have very good cooperation with Zagari Foundation and also a joint program with Cocos Fashion Business in the area of fashion and design. And uh, in the future, we plan also to have similar programs and creative accelerator. This is the program of mentoring for culture and art projects supported by UCF and business. And in the end of this program, we usually have pitching. All the projects, uh, all the projects which received grants uh, from UCF, next year they get some extra investment from business and they monetize their projects successfully. So we work on that. And uh, right now the percent of investment in culture and art projects comparing to the budget one. From business, we have approximately 10% of our uh, specialized fund, the UCF fund, and I do hope that in five years we'll get this 50-50 proportion, 50 from the state budget and another half from other sources, including business. Thank you. Thank you. So I also have a question to Mr. Vladimir. Please tell me. Um, well, I'd like you to share maybe your experience or recommendation to be given to the heads of communities. Okay, how to involve investors in such a way for them later to invest in the community, meaning investing in education, primary and secondary both. How to do it? It's not easy, uh, but I will dare to say a few sentences about what uh, Ms. Ms. Yulia was saying. Uh, she is really perfectly right. Uh, I came across with an article uh, when there was a study being made about the economic and financial crisis that we all faced in 2008 and until 2011. So the countries who did invest into the culture and education, they did not experience so big problems while being in this depression as the other countries who did it. And this is exactly why we decided to increase investment as, as the municipality into the culture. So this is really important and culture makes us a human being. Basically, it opens us the horizons, it opens us creativity and so on and so on. So I really, really strongly support this kind of idea. Uh, back to your question. Uh, while well, talking to um, uh, the companies, you know, that they should contribute largely into the education system or, let's say, support this kind of education, this is a very difficult job. Uh, all, also, the Japanese who came to our municipality with a very developed technology, they think or they expect municipality to basically take on the burden. Why? Because, you know, municipality should create this kind of environment that uh, other will contribute to. But you have to set a, let's say, a role model. So we began to invest first. Um, for example, with this program, we invested over 100,000 euro, uh, and we will invest additional 100,000 uh, next year. Uh, but then, uh, if you are successful enough, if you have a very good team, of course, if you have a vision, and to a certain point, you are brave enough, uh, then other will follow. And this is exactly what happened. After the first investments, after the first, let's say, good experience that we have uh, from this curriculum, other uh, companies who also wanted to headhunt uh, educated workforce or labor force, they came on board. Uh, today, we don't have any problems anymore. Even the businesses who are here in municipality, they are open to me in my suggestions, for example, what they should contribute with and how. So uh, the climate that we were not having before is existing now. And this is that if you want to have a very educated labor force, you have to contribute. It's not the state, it's not municipality, but you have to be part of this kind of a story. Otherwise, you can not go uh, so far and so fast as you wanted to go, because as we all know, all European countries are facing uh, tremendous problems how to get a labor force 
uh, engaged into the companies. Thank you. Thank you, Vladimir, for your answer. And uh, I must say that our time is <laughs> almost <laughs> finished in this workshop. So just to conclude, a question to all the speakers. So not maybe a, not be a question, but give your recommendation. So what would you recommend to communities? What to invest in to ensure the sustainable development, please? Valery, you may start. Uh, okay, Valeria, yes. Uh, first of all, I'd like to advise to invest in two things. First, educational development and uh, entrepreneurship. Three, not two. Entrepreneurship, education and uh, digital transformation and digital technologies. IT. In other words, just we will not have this concept of as economy in just a couple of decades. It will be just digital economy. Digital economy, it incorporates three key components. Digital infrastructure, e-commerce process or e-business. And in fact, I think we as a state and with all our communities, it's not just about evolution, internal evolution. We just need to put a lot of efforts in that to accelerate the process. I truly do believe that digital transformation itself is this quantum leap that will ensure Ukraine's uh, improvement, structural improvement, and to actually take this top position in all the ratings, all global ratings. So I do think that if briefly, I can talk for hours about that, what to do to develop entrepreneurship or education, but just briefly, well, this is my answer. Thank you, Valeria. Thank you for being rational with time. So, Yuri, what to do? Tell us. So, of course, regardless of my experience, I am from educational sector, but first of all, I'd put culture first, combined with education. In, invest in this, of course, and uh, another very important thing, I guess, that I would uh, like to have always underline the values that we stand on that are key for us, key values. I always tell my students that I'm very afraid to have only smart students. I don't want to have exclusively smart students. I really consider that we need to remember about kindness, about empathy, uh, mercy and volunteering and things, all these things that do make us, do make us people together with developed culture and education because there's nothing worse than just super smart, super clever people. This is really something we don't want to get. So, Yuri. Okay, I'll tell you that there are no simple solutions. They are never there. So, I just want, don't want to tell you, like, invest here or there, because it's usually a comprehensive approach. And, of course, education and art primary sectors. This is this is the these are the basics. If we don't, for example, strengthen and enhance the, uh, if we don't give an opportunities for people to develop economically at local level, there will be no access to market and infrastructure and so on. But just not to uh, finish with the word complicated. It's important anyway to be proactive. If you have a wish to change. Regardless of what sector you are in, business, civic society, or you represent the uh, state governance, or you are the media representative, you can do a lot. I would invest in uh, connection building. I would look for partners, invest in trust, and via practical interaction, joint projects. I, tr I would try to generate this trust and in, in, in extend the circle of impact, just ignite people, generate new models, step by step, all the system, all the ecosystem called society will evolve in the right direction. Thank you, Vladimir, Vladimir, briefly. 
Well, as, as it was said, there, there is no a perfect solution, you know, and it's not a very short-term solution as well. Uh, I would say that if you are a mayor, you have to have a vision. So you should know where your municipality will be within, let's say, 10, 15 years. The next thing that you have to have is a very good team of your co-workers. So you cannot design solutions by yourself. You have to listen. You have to, you, you be, you have to be taught about solutions. And of course, you have to take the decisions. You have to be bold as well. And you have to be patient as well, because you cannot invest uh, like from today to tomorrow. This is a process. You have to build up the whole process, but it's going to be uh, very paying you off, because if you will do the right thing, you will be awarded, municipality will be awarded. So be brave, do not think about limitations, open your horizons and take smart decisions. Дуже дякую. Ось фінальний акорд пані Юлія. Thank you, Юлія, for you to finish the session. I can just say that, yes, I can just conclude. Uh, draw the line under all the statements. I agree with all the speakers. Just please, the, lev the value level. This is the most important thing for all our states. I really want one thing to happen, actions and words to be on the same line. Then we'll talk about investment. For the investment talks to fully reconcile with investment actions in our countries and our societies. Then it would be really better to live, easier to live, and the value paradigm will fully align with the real life, because today we still have this discrepancy. We imagine some countries while we live in other countries, in countries that we have to live in. Okay, so thank you, dear speakers. Thank you for this wonderful conclusion and thank you for your time. And I do believe that it was really nice and pleasant for you all. So just uh, concluding, let's invent proactively in comprehensive manner with values. Let's invest in people. Evgeny.